My name is Cameron Gerhardt, and I'm a consultant with SCM Connections. We're really excited about our new partnership with Connexus, and I'm here today to walk you through a short demo of Rapid Response, which is the number one concurrent planning solution on the market. Rapid Response is a web and or Java-based platform that combines all of your data into one system, therefore increasing visibility and reducing decision cycle time. Today, I'm going to demonstrate an instance where Planner is looking to model a demand increase and see how it affects other orders and supplies. To set the stage, we're an electronics manufacturing company making cell phones, tablets, and laptops, and today is September 12th, 2021. So let's get started. This here is the start page for the platform. Here you can access recently used resources, view messages from other users or alert notifications, and find helpful resources such as the Connexus Knowledge Network. Over here on the left, we can explore the various resources that Rapid Response has to offer, such as workbooks, dashboards, and scorecards. Today, we're going to start with a task flow, which will help guide us through the specific dashboards and workbooks needed to model a demand increase. You can see that by opening the task flow, another pane has now appeared on the right side of my screen with step-by-step -step guidance on how to complete this activity. This information can be tailored to meet your company's needs and new task flows can even be created for company-specific activities. By clicking on this first icon, I'll be taken into the dashboard needed for the first step of this process. Of course, these dashboards can be used outside of the context of this activity and should be monitored on a regular basis to watch for abnormalities and potential issues. However, in this situation, I want to take a look at some corporate metrics, specifically our company's revenue. This chart shows us the annual plan here on the blue line compared to a scenario called RS1 demand increase, which is the lighter bluish green bars. As you can see, the past couple of months in October, or sorry, August and September, the current plan has been right on target with our annual plan. However, in the coming months, October, November, and December, we see a slight gap between the current and annual plan. Drilling into November here, we're taken to a tree map that shows us the source of this revenue shortfall is the laptop product group, more specifically, the L1500 product category. By hovering over the items in this category, we can see that each product is about 25% short of the revenue target. Finance has approached us with this revenue gap and has already discussed with the sales team that they can increase laptop sales in the last three months of the year. Now, it's up to us to model the demand increase and determine how it affects other orders and whether supplies are available to close the revenue gap. To do this, I'm going to navigate to our Consensus Demand Planning Workbook, which is the next step of the task flow. This workbook provides us with both a table and chart view of the various demand plans used to come up with consensus. So let's go ahead and look at the L1500 product group and scroll over to the months we're trying to fix, so October through December. And now we can more clearly see that the unconstrained demand plan in each month is about 20,000 units short compared to our annual plan. So to resolve this, I'm gonna create a scenario which will enable us to test out a change before committing it to our current plan. Let's go ahead and call this forecast adjustment. Click OK. And then in October through December, I'm going to add a 20,000 unit adjustment. Great. Now let's hit save and see what this does to our plan. Instantly, we can see now that our unconstrained demand plan is much closer in line with our annual plan, which is really good news. However, the rapid response engine was also able to run this change through the supply side and notice that by increasing demand by 20,000 units, we have some short supplies that are going to make some of our orders late. 
That's represented right here by this demand plan at risk quantity of 1,631 units. So next, we want to dig into these late orders and see how we can resolve them. So let's head over to our demand order analysis workbook. Before we dig into the information here, I'm going to adjust our scenarios and add in the one that we just created for forecast adjustment. Great. So up top here, we see a table view of all of our orders. And if we scroll over to the right, we can see that for each order, it tells us the total quantity needed and whether or not it's late. And if we keep scrolling to the right, we can even see the impact on revenue that it will have. So by this first order being late, we would lose about $11,000. Another thing to point out here is that we can see both our actual orders and forecast orders. So as you could see, there weren't any actual orders, just forecast orders, but that's good because it means that we still have time to model a change with the supplies and resolve the issues before it's too late. So let's head back to all of our orders and I'm going to drill into one of these. Now down here at the bottom, we have a supply chain network map that shows us the finished good in question, which is up here at the top. I'm gonna hide our legends to make it a bit easier to view, and we can see the various nodes that are impacted by the short material. So we can see um, when the due date is, the available date, how many are needed, and other information. So if we scroll down in the map here, we can end up seeing that it's this very component at the bottom, E1512, which is causing everything else upstream to be late. If we head over here and look at our component tree then, we're presented with an indented bomb. And similarly, that E1512 component is highlighted in red, indicating that it's making everything else late because we're short of this component, which is the printed circuit board. Next, we want to analyze this item to see if we can pull forward some supplies by rescheduling production. So I'm just going to click on this part number and navigate to the planning sheet. So this is our main source for planners, schedulers, and buyers to analyze both supply and demand information. On the tab half of the screen here, we can see the high level demand and supply data, and then on the bottom, we can view specific details for products such as on-hand inventory, demand orders, pegged allocations, and supply orders, which we'll look at now. So for this E1512 item, the printed circuit board, we can see that there's six planned orders upcoming. If we scroll over to the right a bit, we can see the various quantities needed and also the due and available dates. So in this case, we basically want to change the system um, to generate a recommended date and tell us whether to push these orders, uh, planned orders forward or backward in order to get our meet our demand on time and avoid those late orders. So what I'm going to do now is create another scenario on top of the forecast adjustment one we just did. And this one I'll go ahead and call reschedule. Again, you can see it's based on our forecast adjustment. And now here, I'm going to go in and change the status of each of my orders to recommend only so that the system will generate a recommended date for us. All right, now that we've got those entered and hit save, and we can see that rapid response generated a new recommended date. So we'll go ahead and copy those over, make those our new due dates, and hit save again. Okay, so at this point, we wanna head back to our demand order analysis worksheet. I'm going to change our scenario here to no longer be the forecast adjustment, but instead the reschedule. And when I do that, Suddenly up top, we can see that there are no longer 
any records found, meaning that we don't have any late orders. And even further, if I go back to our consensus demand planning worksheet and change that to our reschedule scenario, we can see that our demand plan at risk is completely gone. Now, the final step in testing out this demand increase is going to be comparing the various scenarios to see which impacts our corporate metrics in the most beneficial way. So let's take a look at our Evaluate Plays scorecard. All right, before we take a look at the metrics, let me go ahead and get the right scenarios in here. So now we have our three scenarios. First is the RS1 demand increase. This is the one we started with, which is our current plan and had the gap between the um, unconstrained demand plan and current and annual plan. Next, we have our forecast adjustment, which is where we went in and increased the forecast for the L1500 laptops, but we also had some late orders because of that. And then finally, we have our reschedule scenario where we still have that demand increase, but we were able to reschedule the production of the component to ensure that no orders are late. So first, I wanna point out the key constraint utilization. So we can see that this metric went up a little bit between the first and third scenarios, meaning that our resources are being used more to generate more supplies, but they're not completely maxed out. So we're okay with that. Next, we can also see that our on-time to request and revenue at risk improved between our second and third scenarios. So now we're delivering everything on time and don't have any revenue at risk. And finally, we can see that our overall revenue improved from 158 billion to 162 between the first and third, meaning that we can increase demand and still fulfill all orders while increasing revenue. So once these results have been reviewed by the finance and executive teams, this scenario then, then can be promoted and become our current operating plan should we choose to proceed with it. So that's a, how we can model a demand increase in rapid response. It's clear that this tool is very powerful and the concurrent nature of it means that we can instantly see the impact a demand change has on inventory, supply, and so much more. Our team members won't have to sit around waiting for a job to run or a change to feed into their plan overnight, which makes these problems a lot quicker to solve. Further, the dashboards and scorecards that we looked at are such an incredible way to quickly analyze data and see the impact of changes in real time, which will provide you with deep insights and give you more confidence in your decision making. I hope you enjoyed this short system demo and have caught a glimpse of what Rapid Response's powerful capabilities can do for your business. If you're interested in a full demo or learning more about Connexus and Rapid Response, reach out to us at scmconnections.com or LinkedIn for more info. Thanks for watching.